I noiselessly and painlessly became quiet in the wheelchair. Trey, I actually died at that moment. And when I got out of the body, my teacher was there. We were both ghosts, like in the movie, Patrick Swayze, a ghost. We crossed trillions of moons and planets and stars in another fraction of a second. And then I was at a tunnel. And in that tunnel, it was lit up. And I saw beings in that tunnel coming back. Some of them I knew at an earlier time, 1,500, 1,400. Hello. Uh, I'm extremely grateful that Trey has invited me to come uh, and speak to his audience on YouTube. And I'm going to share with you a little bit about my background. I was born in Montgomery, Alabama, the civil rights state where Dr. King started the whole movement. I was born in the forties and a family of eight siblings. I grew up, my father had a job, he lost his job. And so he moved up North. So I came to Chicago when I was about, about almost six. Uh, my mother was very religious. She took me to Baptist church, Christian church, and I grew up in the Catholic church, Christian church. But as I got to Chicago, I entered school. I was a mediocre student. I wasn't that uh, A student, you can say a C, C plus student. And I enjoyed sports. I love basketball played baseball, did a little running of track. But as I grew up, my curiosity started increasing as I got in high school. I became extremely, almost obsessively curious. So I had this strange curiosity. So as I went into college, I studied education. I studied science, astronomy, philosophy. And I... Uh, Got a job teaching school. I taught at all levels, elementary school, high school, and even at the college level. And so my brother, who was younger than me, uh, he was 24. I was 26 when he got killed. He was murdered. I became extremely depressed, almost suicidal, because I couldn't understand. After seeing him that day, we laughed and joked. Then that evening, my sister called and said, he's in the morgue. You need to come and see him. So I was very depressed when I went to see him. I said, did they catch him? He said, the police caught him and he's in jail now. So my mother and father got together and got a lawyer to try to make sure he does some time for what he did. But after a year, they let him go. I couldn't understand this. So I became further depressed. I started questioning God. I said, God, why would you let a person get killed and, and they get locked up and you let him go? Do, are you real, God? I said, I heard you were real, but I don't know if you're real. So that's when I began my seeking. My seeking got very intense. It took me to Canada, different parts of Europe, uh, throughout the Middle East, Hong Kong, Japan, and I ended up in India. In India, I fell in love with that country because it was a land of magic. Most of the religions, major religions, come from that part of the world, the East or the Middle East. So I started was fortunate by a strange coincidence to meet a friend of mine. His name was Ishwa Puri. He was a high government official. He was chief secretary of the Punjab. He was in charge of the tourist organization. And he was also uh, chief of the police. He had about 50,000 policemen over him. He graduated from Harvard and he studied business law. But strange thing happened. He would have different conversation with different people there, including Timothy Leary. <laughs> they were taking mushrooms and having what they considered to be out of body experience. So when they talked to him, they said, what mushrooms are you using? <laughs> he laughed. He said, I'm using a mushroom. He said, I had a teacher and he taught me how to go inside this body. 
because this body got so many secrets and so many mysteries. And if you knew how to dig properly with the attention of a teacher who can show you how to dig, you can open up, open up all these doors. He, just, he explained the nine doors. And he said, there's a tent door right behind the two eyes. And when you die, this door automatically open it, will open. There are only a couple of things that can open it. Great trauma to the physical body will force this door open. Heart attack, gunshot wounds, strokes, kidney problems, any type of pain exacted upon the physical body force, will force this third eye center to open. He said, but there's a conscious way to do it without pain. So after learning so much from him, uh, I went back to America. He taught me that I should eat plant-based food because everybody who's made significant amount of progress, they, they are very, they have to learn compassion. We are automatically made to be compassionate. If, and he told me something which I never forgot. He said, imagine, do you drive an automobile? I said, yes. He said, say if you're driving an automobile and you're riding down the road without thinking, sir, without thinking, if an animal runs in front of you without thinking, what is your first instinct? I said, I'll swerve or put on brakes. He said that because you are a nonviolent animal, the nonviolent DNA principle forces you to swerve and put on brakes. It, it works in you because you're nonviolent and that compassion needs to grow. But when you eat animals and kill them, you're picking up karma and that makes you more less compassionate over a period of time. It doesn't happen right away, but it happens gradually. So he explained all of this. So I wanted to be initiated by him. And so let me fast forward and go back into history when I started meditating. When I initially meditated, he said, you have to put your attention on the third eye and there's a sound right in the area of the third eye. And you put your attention on the sound because all of the holy books, I don't care if they Bhagavad Gita, the Mahabharata, the uh, Christian Bible or the Jewish Bible, any of these holy books, including the Vrig Vita, they will tell you this, this whole creation is created by vibration. God is vibratory energy. He is actually music that's operating in everything. And if you put your attention on this music, you can ride back to your original place of origin. He got two currents. He's got a centripetal current and a centrifugal current. And you have to put your attention on the current that takes you back. The current that we left on brought us here. And all animals, all everything that's living is operating and they got this sound in them. But the human being is a privileged person. The human being is the only species that can go back to God. I said, what? What about the angels? He said, the angels, if they want to go back, they are in the astral plane, which is the kindergarten stage of the spiritual world. I said, kindergarten stage? I thought the heaven was, was the highest stage. He said, no. They like the elementary school. All of the heavens and hells are in the astral plane. And you got to go above that. So say if you go into the, uh, the so-called causal plane, that's the high school. You can go beyond that. Now, let me go into my experience after I start having this initial experience in meditation because it scared the hell out of me. Pardon my French. <laughs> this sound got so loud. I felt like I couldn't breathe. I was choking. And I felt I was going to die. So he was. I had come back to America. I wrote him a letter. He said, what are you afraid of? You got to cross this fear of death. And when you die, I'll be there to chaperone you. Don't worry. Have faith in what I'm saying. I will be the one that will meet you. So I got more comfortable and had the, some experiences. But the biggest experience I had took place in the spring of 2019. I was supposed to get a colonoscopy. Uh, my wife insisted. I had got surgery on my hip from playing basketball at 18. I got it at a later part in my life, but my right hip was acting up too. And I saw a doctor and he said, you need to get the right hip replaced. 
So as I was in Rush Hospital to get a colonoscopy, my wife insisted. And as she got a wheelchair to, to wheel me up in the elevator to the fourth floor to see the doctor who was supposed to give me the colonoscopist operation, uh, I had an argument with her before I got on that floor. I said, I don't need this colonoscopy. I've been eating plant-based food for 50 years, you know. And she said, shut your so-and-so up. I won't use the curse word, you know. When you've been married a long time, these wives can take you for granted. <laughs> especially, especially if you love them, okay? <laughs> so I was quiet. I said, I need to go to the bank and get some money. She said, did you hear me? Shut yourself up. You're going to take this operation and see this doctor. I said, but plants only eat water and sunlight. Shut up. <laughs> so as she wheeled me in, I noiselessly and painlessly became quiet in the wheelchair. Trey, I actually died at that moment. And when I got out of the body, my teacher was there. We were both ghosts, like in the movie, Patrick Swayze, a ghost. <laughs> and so I tried to grab the my beautiful jacket, which they were cutting off. And he said, "You can't. They can't see you. You can't touch them. It'll go through your, through them. Your hands. Everything will go through." He said, "They can't hear you either. So let's quit talking." I said, "Wow." And I was awake like I am now. So I said, "I wanted to see the sun." He said, "You see it every day." Hey, I said, "Would you please let me see it, sir?" It's okay. We'll fly. So in a few seconds, we were in front of the sun. All of the uh, explosion taking place, nuclear explosion, hydrogen explosion, gas, fumes, huge. But I didn't feel anything because we were in the astral body. And as we left that area, he said, let's leave this boring area. We crossed trillions of moons and planets and stars in another fraction of a second. And then I was at a tunnel. And in that tunnel, it was lit up. And I saw beings in that tunnel coming back. Some of them I knew at an earlier time, 1,500, 1,400, even earlier. I didn't know them all, but the one I knew, they recognized me. And they said, they gave me a different name. I said, yes, I responded to that name. And they said, uh, are you from America? I said, yes. They said, we going there. And we'd like to get your telephone number and your address. I gave them my telephone number, knowing that when they took birth, like normal babies, they go into a, a state of forgetfulness. They become spiritually Alzheimer's. They become Alzheimer's people at that time. They can't recall. All children, all people are suffering from deja vu, a lack of memory. But you have a small percentage of children who have specific memory, which I can go into later. They're rare, but they come here with memory of who they were at a previous time. So as we get through the tunnel, we go into the astral plane. A huge, beautiful, gigantuan, I don't know how to describe the largeness of that world. Let me give you some idea of how large it is. If you were to take a quarter, which represent the totality of the physical universe, including the trillions of stars and planetary systems and universe that we see in the physical universe, it would be the size of a quarter. The astral plane would be the size of the Pacific Ocean. That's how huge that world is. There are millions, and I can't even count the amount of souls, but all of the people there are extremely beautiful in the middle part of the astral world. I didn't go to the hills, okay? But in the astral world, they're all beautiful. They can, they can just create houses by thinking. We do the same thing on Earth. Some of the things that they do up there, we do on Earth, but we go see an architect. We get builders, right? We have plans that they work from. There, you just think, and you can create mansions there. You can hire people, or you can get people to, because they don't charge you anything. Uh, you can create mansions there. They can float in the sky, because there's no gravity in that world. You can fly. You can travel at great speed, but you can't cross that world unless you have great spiritual money. Just like in this world, you need money to travel all over. Spiritual money is human attention, your ability to concentrate attention. Or you can be with a guide and he can just wrap you up and take you. So I was chaperone. 
I wanted to meet the, the president of that world. That world got what I call counterfeit gods. Cause it's just like this world. There are counterfeit leaders. You call them presidents. America got a president. Uh, he has so many powers, but he got administrators. The administrators in that world are angels. And the, but he said, you don't need to meet him because if they meet him, they're going to want to ask me how can they go higher up? And then I got to tell them to go back to earth again because the system is set up where your seeking can only take place in an intense way on earth. Because on earth, you're in the human body, you have the illusion, you have the sensation that you have free will. You don't have it, really. The Lord created this illusion by making the human being feels he or she got free will. As a matter of fact, if God becomes a human being, which he does, he comes to the pickup souls, but the human beings can kill him. He maintained that illusion of free will because that illusion creates the feeling of seeking. Seeking is what will make you go back. And he, God will respond to your seeking. Seek and you shall find. And when you seek strong enough, as, as in the East, when the chela is ready, the guru appears or the teacher appears. So as we cross that world, everybody in that world communicate through telepathy. Telepathy is something that you say in your mind and you can hear the other person thinking in his mind, the thoughts. So there's no possibility of deception. You can actually see thoughts. You can read them. In this world, we try to read them. If you have children, children can be getting bad grades in school. And so the teacher gave me a bad grade and, uh, and the, teacher, the child could have been acting up in the classroom. But if you're a sharp parent, you can say, cut out the beat. Yes. <laughs> you go up there and see the teacher and validate it and punish the child. We try to use common sense and uh, what I call the intuitive sense in this world, but the physical body blocks the intuition from flowing perfectly, but it does flow. So uh, now this uh, experience can be related to uh, a lady. I'll share this with you. I don't know if you heard of her, Betty Eady, mm -hmm. embrace, embrace by the light. She's still living. She's a friend of mine. She went into the astral plane and she, in her book on toward the end of the book, she was in a garden and she loved roses on earth. So when she went into the garden, a thought came in her mind. Oh, these are gorgeous roses. Look at the colors. They, they, they got a type of life in them. They almost like alive. Everything in the astral world is full of life. Just like in this world, everything is full of life. And she thought, oh, I wonder how it feels to become a rose. She actually became a rose, went into the body of the rose. And the rose was swaying to the music in that world. Everything is full of music in that world. People who go there, they don't know that, that vibrational background in the mountains and the grass. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, this musical song, The Sound of Music by Julie. Mm -hmm. the, the hills are flowing with music. That's actually real there. And so as you get into that world, you hear music. People are, everybody is beautiful. They're only ugly people on the earth. But, <laughs> even the, uh, <laughs> but the physically ugly people, they're in a modern age where they can go get plastic surgery. They can put eyelashes on, makeup, and make themselves temporarily look pretty <laughs> for a moment. But everything has its own light. The astral body is lit up. It's made of refined matter. It looks just like the physical body. So as we travel through that world, and I went into the causal plane where all of the karma exists, the Akashic, the real Akashic records are in the causal world. You have Akashic records, not total Akashic records, but partial, partial records in the astral plane. But the totality of the casual records are in the astral world. Casual records is the totality of karma, of everybody, not just of yourself. Everybody karma is in, expressed there, past, future, etc. But the astral world is a universal mind. Your mind is actually the astral world. It's the astral world operating in this body now. The causal mind operates in the physical body through the astral senses, 
and through the physical senses. The sensory perception are really the astral body. It's strange when he explained that. He said the senses get enhanced when you go there. You can see in a panoramic view. Right now you have to turn your head. There you can just automatically look with your eyes and see everything. And knowledge, people don't have to go to school there, but let me use the example that if you do go to school, you go to places where you can concentrate attention. You can say, I want to know about geography. You just contemplate and you get the history of geography. It's getting fused into you. You can look at a tree. There are trees there too. There are people, there are objects. You can look at a tree and you can know how long it's going to stay there, where it came from, what's going to happen to it once, once they, it collapses. So you get real knowledge without the tedium, without the tedium of studying and reading books in this world. The knowledge is inside you. It flows easier with the concentration of attention. So as I got into the causal world, the causal world is so huge, I can't describe it. If I said the causal world is the size of a, a, a half a dollar, then the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean would be the size of the causal world. And that's not being accurate in terms of mathematical measurement. It's a huge place. And, but very few people have gone to that place. It's hard to go even to the astral world. You can go to the astral world on your own to some extent by using a little willpower and concentrating attention and disciplining yourself. But very few people have crossed that world and gone to the causal without the aid of a teacher who's gone there. And if you want to cross the causal world, you have to go with a teacher who's gone beyond the causal world. The system is set up that nobody can go higher than his own teacher. There, nobody. Therefore, God himself will come and get you in a strange way. Now, how does God create all of these species? God is inside us. He does it the same way you do it. You can say this talk is a dream inside of a dream inside of a dream. I don't know if you heard the songs in the 60s. Dream, 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 dream. When you go to sleep, you automatically create three, three things happen to you. You become unconscious of the physical body. You start snoring. That's the first thing. And you become amnesic. Your knowledge gets reduced. And then you create time and space. And you create people, animals, cars, skies, everything you create. You can go into a restaurant and order a hot dog. But it tastes exactly like the hot dog in this world. The only different, you won't be able to pick up the quality of the texture in, in that world like you can pick up in this world. If you, you can make money in that world too. Sometimes you can see money and pick it up, but you can't bring it here. Okay. <laughs> so somebody was asking me in one of my talks that I gave live, they said, well, why you can't pick up anything? I said, you can't. I said, let me tell you how, how you dream and what happens. So if I had two pills, a red pill, which would make you have the extremely horrific, the most horrific nightmare you have ever had in your life. And I got a blue pill. If you take the blue pill, you'll have a pleasant dream. But if you take this red pill, you will wake up. But I have a suitcase with $5 million. So when you wake up, you got you $5 million. Most of the people said they'll choose the red pill. But some people said, no, 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 no. I don't want to have that horrific dream. I said, you can have it anyway. You don't know. You can't control your dreams. So that's how you bribe to leave the heavens to make further progress. They offer you, they say, you can have higher experiences, but you got to go back and pay off some of your karma. So people can be born here blind. You find children born with cancer and die at the age of six or seven, you find children that get killed by drive-by bullets at the age of five or six. People don't know what's happening. You can be born a slave like I was born in the 1700s and you think God is punishing you. God does not make a mistake, but you can only learn that when you go to the astral plane. Cause in this world, you can't see justice. In India, they have a saying, the wheel of justice 
grind slowly, but they grind exceedingly fine. You don't get justice in one life. You come back. You keep coming back. There's a wheel in India. They call it the wheel of a Wagga one. People go there and they pay a dollar thinking that they can <laughs> please the wheel. <laughs> no, you cannot please the wheel. You can only burn it up through meditation. And if you get in touch with the sound, you start burning up some of your karma. Or your teacher can burn it up in other ways. So your karma is what blocks you from going higher up. But we volunteered. We were with the original father. And he asked us at that time if I can use, because there's no language in that world. Language stops once you go beyond the causal plane. You have to operate on intuition, pure intuition, pure knowledge, and pure love. So when you were there, he said to the uncountable numbers of souls, would you like to have an adventure? Now he created all these souls, okay? Just like you create the illusion of beings when you go to sleep at night. When you wake up, Trey, what happens to all those beings and all those objects? They disappear. Yes. So he does this because he is total consciousness. He is everywhere present. He's all over. He's creating everything, just like you do. Let me go off on a tangent for a second. Hmm. My friend told me, my teacher said there was a man. He had about 12 children in India. And his wife would nag him all the time and say, you're not making enough money. All you do is sleep when you come home. You need to get you another job. So he said, I've been looking but I don't have any skills. So one day he opened up the newspaper and he met somebody and that person taught him how to dream. So then he would come home and he wouldn't even eat food. He would eat out and just go into bed. And then she got after him and said, wake up, why you sleep so much? You've been doing this for a few years. He said, this is the only time I can enjoy myself. <laughs> I don't have to hear you. I can meet with beautiful women. And you can't get me because they, that's unreal. I can create boats. I can create planes. I can go into space and go on some of these planets out there. I can do everything in that world that I can't do in this world. So therefore, I sleep and I dream. God is doing the same thing. He's creating all of us, and he's watching the drama. He's not he's getting all nagged by a wife, is he? Pardon me? I said he's not getting nagged by his wife, wife is he? By his voice? No, by his wife. Is that why he's taking a nap? Is that why is he is he dreaming right he, now? He, he only put a certain amount of attention into the dream. He can be controlling all of these world through daydreaming. You know, he doesn't put all his attention. Otherwise, he would he could get locked into this world too. But he he always keep that sound current. So when he become a human being, he always has a human being who's spiritually developed. And that human beings initiate him and teach him how to go back. It's strange. How can God teach another being that's a disciple to become God? That's a mystery that you only can know, understand when you go above the mind. Okay? But anyway, uh, I went beyond the mind with my teacher. He took me to the area which you call the region of salvation. Socrates called this region Know thyself, where you get to know you are the soul, for real. But the soul is not you either. But you experience, I am the soul. You're above mind, you're above time, you're above space. Just like you create time and space in the dream world, you can see an old man putting bricks up on a new house and a young man on the ground passing up bricks. You can see a lady with a baby in a buggy. You get the sensation that there's time. You created it with these little coincidences and situations through your dream experience, okay? He's doing the same thing. Time is not real. This, we have three bodies. The physical body, the astral body, which is the sensory body, and the causal body, which is the mind. They're all inside this body. And they are like traps. They hold us in this world, the three prison houses. And the only way we can get out is to seek intensely. You said you were a seeker. But you got to seek so intensely that, hey, I got to give up eating animals because that keeps me involved and I got to pay for that. The world is set up where you don't pay for it all in one life. The next life you can be born like Stevie Wonder, blind, with great musical skill, make a lot of money. But Stevie will probably give up some of his money if he can get your eyes. You know what I mean? Because well, there's the, nothing what's like What's the purpose seeing. of this realm then, right? If this is 
if we're locked into these bodies, is is this a trap? Is this a prison? Like, is this a schoolhouse? Okay, like, I'll tell you what the purpose. This, there were some souls that said, no, we don't want to go. And we were the ones who came. And when we came, and those who went back, you will discover if you go all the way back that you'll meet some of your other comrades who have never left. And you'll be dancing with so much joy and happiness. They happy, but they won't understand your happiness. Why are you dancing? All you can say, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> because your happiness get increased by this experience. You can increase your happiness in this world by leaving your kids, going to solitary confinement for five years and then coming out. Woo, you're glad to get out, right? Happiness will gush from you. It gushes more so when you're there. You could not express the happiness when you were there originally. You got used to it. But when you come here and go back, ooh, you're tremendously happy. You don't know how to describe it. So anyway, I've given you all the experience, and this experience in this world is a play upon awareness. Just like the Lord can control this awareness, let me give you an example of what I mean when I say awareness. Let's take a glass, let's take a, a, a glass of water. And if you got a glass of water, how many drops are in that glass? Just give me any number that you think. Thousands of drops, right? Yes. Now, if you become one drop, you can become one drop in that glass, right? There can be thousands of other drops. Now, my teacher gave me this example. He said, the Lord, imagine the Lord is an ocean of love and water, huge wave, and the master is a wave. But he's still part of that water, right? Mm -hmm. He got powers and all, all kind of things. The drop is maybe aware of a little portion of that ocean, like a fish, a little portion. But the Lord can expand his awareness and become totally one big drop <laughs> of the whole ocean. We have the capacity to expand our awareness and become God too. We are miniature versions of God. Does that make sense now? Sure. So have you, if you have, have you ever had that awareness, did you ever connect with the ocean? I connected with the wave. <laughs> My teacher was the wave. And when I went to the region of know thyself, salvation, which I don't have to come back. I, God is still a couple of stages above that. I said, won't you take me all the way back? He said, no, you cannot go all the way back. He was not using word, but he communicated through direct, direct perception. He said, if you go back, you have to pay off additional karma. So you need to go back and you'll be speaking to hundreds of thousands of people. And so these people need you to come back. So Trey, I don't know whether to thank you or not thank you for pulling me back. Why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm here with you, brother. <laughs> so if you have any other question, I'm free to answer them. And I'd like to thank your audience. And if they wish to get in touch with me, you know, they can just P-R-O-F-B-R-I-N-S-O-N uh, at gmail.com. And if you ever want to have, I may want you to come to Chicago. Uh, you said you're in what state now? I'm in Maryland. Maryland, we may pay for your flight. And I'd like to put you on the stage where you can meet some people who've had this near-death experience. Because most of them who've had it, if you uh, go on, um, not I'm not thinking YouTube, Gallup poll, they will tell you over 20 million Americans have clinically died and because of modern medicine have been resuscitated and have come back. Most of them have full memory of only the astral plane. Hmm. That's, that's, I'm talking about America, but what about the millions of people in Africa, China? You don't have to believe in God. Just be a good human being. God does not care about religion. He does not come here to establish religion. Religion develops after he leaves. If he doesn't appoint a successor, the successor, somebody will come up and start preaching and they start charging money. These original masters do not charge a penny. They freely give their knowledge and wisdom to sincere seekers. And it's unconditional love that they show to people, even to their enemies. 
So do you have any other questions? Yeah, I got a lot. Um, so you, okay. you talked to, you talked about these beings that show up when people pass over or have near death experiences. Most people see Jesus, uh, I think because in the Western culture we're raised Christian or Catholic or right, vice versa, right. right? So are they are they actually Jesus? Or are they very who, good who question? Are they? Very good question. If you ever have an astral experience, ask them who they are. Because anybody with a beard will think they Buddha, Jesus, or whatever. We we assume that. We should ask them and they'll be truthful and say, no, I'm not Jesus, but because most people think Jesus is the only way, right? The religious founders, I don't care if it's the Muslim, if you don't follow Allah, you're going to hell. You got to follow Allah if you're a Muslim. If you don't follow Jesus, you're going to hell if you're a Christian. You know, they don't know that an atheist with more love in his or her heart can have some spiritual experiences of being in heaven. God only looks at your heart. And your heart got compassion, which is a cousin of love. Compassion and love are connected to each other. But pain is necessary. Like Socrates says, if you read his uh, book, especially his trial on how he was forced to drink the hemlock, he says pain and pleasure are connected like Siamese twin connected at the head. If you pursue pain, it creates awareness. It forces you to seek and create awareness. If you pursue pleasure, you reduce awareness. You can go all the way down to an animal or a bird or people who pursue pleasure, they get reduced consciousness automatically. It doesn't mean that they come, can't come back because all these experiences are meant to improve us. So we're on a huge cycle of evolving. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Yes, sir. Do you do you ever speak to the beings like say if someone has an out-of-body experience um and they don't know how to i guess travel in the astral realm how, what advice would you give them if they start you know meditating and having these experiences should there be beings that they look out for like what is the what is the, the road map that they should be following in the astral I, ha I asked somebody who several people wrote me and i said you're lucky but don't press your luck. Would you want to go out in space and end up on a planet and can't get back in the body? Would you like for somebody to come and snap your silver cord and you can't get back in the human body and you lost out in space? I said, you have to satisfy your intellect because God don't, he does not want you to seek him for these experiences. These experiences are gifts. Like you don't want your wife seeking you for money and houses, right? You want her to love you as close to unconditional as possible. And maybe wishful thinking, but you know, that's what you want. Okay, we all want that. God wants it too. So he will get that. You got to love the Lord with all that mind, heart, and soul. He wants everything from you. Then he'll give you everything he got. So he'll make you himself. You'll become God. So I tell these people, seek. And if you get experiences, try to find a teacher or a guide. Pray inside. I need a guide. Don't think you can. It's like going to North Korea. If you know what's going to happen, you wouldn't travel over there by yourself. You would have to go with somebody who knows the crazy fellow over there who's the prime minister. If you go anywhere, it's best to go with a guide. And all of these holy books speak of having a guide or a teacher. They call it a teacher or mershad. Mm -hmm. Any other question? How am I doing so far in terms of satisfying your question? You're doing great, man. I appreciate this. Um, so all of this knowledge that you talk about and speak about, did it all come to you while you had this near-death experience? Or this is this experiences over your lifetime? The experience came in stages and in spurts. The first experience I had was when I was meditating at the age of about 28 after I got initiated in my home. And I heard the sound and it scared the hell out of me because I thought I was going to die. So I wrote a letter to my teacher. He said, why are you worried? I'm going to meet you. You got to develop more faith. Read the book. You got to satisfy your intellect. Even if you spend your whole life satisfying the intellect, it's time gain, not time loss. 
because that has to be gotten out of the way. And that gives you intellectual faith. And then as you develop faith and love in your teacher, you automatically will gain experiences. He can give you experiences without meditation. If you knew how to really meditate, you will learn that all you got to do every night when you go to sleep, do you put forth any effort? No, I usually just pass out. <laughs> if you knew how to remain conscious, uh, fully aware like you are now and lose the awareness of the physical body. You That's happened brain. once. That's happened once. That's happened once in my dreams where I became lucid. I'm talking about going beyond, beyond lucidity where you become unconscious, where you can see the physical body and you go all the way up into the astral plane just by, without effort, just losing the awareness of the physical body because the physical body blocks you from going further up. So therefore they give you some words to repeat to make you stay awake and try to go up with that wakefulness. But if you knew how to go up wakefully without meditation, you there in the astral plane at least. Mm. Okay. I love it. Professor, thank you so much for this opportunity to speak to you. I loved every second of it. Um, yeah. Okay. We have to do this again sometime. Okay. Well, the last thing I want to say is that consciousness can never commit suicide. You always are conscious. You can never become unconscious. You're always conscious of something. And you always remain awake. But the question becomes how to get greater wakefulness. And that's the spiritual path. Great seeking, intensified seeking. And you can get that through association with individuals who uh, automatically have that. You can get that by praying to the Lord and say, I need to be around people. And don't forget, you pulled me back. I didn't want you to pull me back. Okay, let's end on a happy note. <laughs> and learn to eat more plant-based food, okay? I love it.